Archer Aviation are using Palantir's artificial intelligence platform. Let's talk. So guys, we're in for a bit of a wild one today. I've been looking around and Archer Aviation are using Palantir's artificial intelligence platform. And I've got a video explaining how we're utilizing this. But first, I want to share a little bit of a personal story. Both me and Reese, we've probably said it in our live stream before, were looking at Palantir round about the time we were buying in Heavy into Rocket Lab. And boy, don't I wish we went in when we should have. We were looking at around six to eight dollars, and we've missed a boat. After a smashing earnings, Palantir is now up to a hundred dollars. But one thing I'm gonna ask you is how much of our community is in Palantir Technologies? Please let me know below. Is it something we should get into? Or have we completely missed the boat? I can't wait to hear your thoughts. But now, let's get into this video on how Archer is utilizing Palantir's artificial intelligence platform. So I done a video about seven months ago on how Archer could utilize Palantir's technology. So if you haven't seen it, you can check that out. But I thought I'd do an updated version where we can watch this video and analyze how Archer will benefit from Palantir. So let's not hesitate and get right onto it. Uh, thank you, Palantir, for having me here today. Um, as an ex Andorillion, congrats on the Titan win as well. Um, really exciting news. So um, I'm here today to tell you about Archer Aviation, uh, our midnight aircraft, and how we're working together with Palantir AIP to transform urban mobility. Um, how many people were stuck sitting in traffic on the 101 this morning <laughs> trying to get here? Yeah, a lot of folks. Um, and I'm sure you're sitting there wondering, yo, why are we still doing this? It's 21st century, there has to be a better way. Uh, and Peter Thiel famously said, we wanted uh, flying cars and we got 104 characters, 140 characters. But uh, I'm here to tell you today, uh, the, the future's coming and Archer's gonna be launching next year uh, to transform this. So, uh, so Archer's mission is really about uh, how do we make our cities more efficient, better places to live and work? Uh, and so half of the world's population today lives in cities. It's gonna be two thirds by 2050. And as our populations have grown, our economic activity has grown, our city has been able to keep up with that growth by scaling into the third dimension and building more buildings, um, skyscrapers, but our transportation's really been stuck in two dimensions in a gridlock. And so uh, as, as our population grows, there's really not, uh, not any place to grow and no, nowhere to go except for up. And so we look at cities like San Francisco and San Jose, uh, Chicago, New York, and looked at why aren't we flying around these cities today? Uh, I flew out here from New York on Tuesday, very nearly missed my flight getting stuck in the gridlock trying to get into the Holland Tunnel. Um, and so we've got this you know, massive city, but you know, everyone trying to go through one, one pinch point. So when you look at you know, going to the third dimension, taking advantage of all that space, you could fly there in just nine minutes. So guys, let me stop it there. This is the kind of thing I want to hear spoken about quite a bit more with Archer Aviation. They seem to have gone very heavy on the fence and Abu Dhabi. I want to hear on the next earnings call all about the downtown Manhattan, the San Francisco's. But let me know, do you want to hear more about it or are you happy with the way Archer are handling things? Also, if you haven't seen it, we're streaming this next earnings call. I'm going to drop it right at the end of this video. So make sure you hit like on this video and then hit like on the following video. So it makes sure the algorithm show us just in time for earnings. All right, guys, let's get back to it. And the technology that's going to enable us to do this really at scale is the electric propulsion that drives Archer's midnight aircraft. And so because Archer is all electric, it's zero emissions, it's 100 times quieter than a helicopter flying overhead, and it's fully redundant, which is going to make it as safe as flying in a commercial aircraft today. And so those core pieces of the electric technology is what is going to enable us to actually really go and operate this at scale, at a cost that's affordable to everyone, uh, and actually go uh, transform urban mobility. So. Archer was really designed from, from the first sketch uh, around this mission. And so it's got four passengers and a pilot, flies at 150 miles an hour in a range of 100 miles, really designed for this urban transportation mission, moving people you know, from downtown Manhattan to the airport, moving people from San Francisco to San Jose, and doing it in a way that communities are going to want and going to accept. And in order to do this, in order to achieve our vision, um, we're going to have to build aircraft um, at a scale an order of magnitude greater than has ever been seen in commercial aviation. And so we're working with our start partner Stellantis. Uh, we're really excited to work with them. They've got folks embedded in the team. 
we're leveraging their expertise and their knowledge with, with, uh, with Foundry and with AIP uh, to, to build a facility that's going to be capable of building 2,000 aircraft a year in Covington, Georgia. Um, and so we're really excited. Oh, guys, this video was from last year, so this factory is already up and running. But it's, I'm glad to see that Palantir AI was utilized for this. Excited to, to leverage that knowledge, um, leverage AIP uh, to, to really produce at an unprecedented scale. And as we build these aircraft, then we need to operate them. And so we're looking at our cities around the world and saying, how are we going to deploy hundreds of aircraft into these cities at dozens of takeoff and landing sites, uh, moving tens of thousands of passengers per day? And so the, the complexity of this operation that, that flows from how do we build our aircraft and deploy them and operate them and maintain them? Um, how do we handle our customer operations? How do we handle weather disruptions? All of that, to be able to do that at this sort of scale, is going to require a digital twin of our entire enterprise, of all of our operations, creating a single source of truth um, that everyone's operating off of. Um, you can imagine a, a supply chain disruption in our motor uh, subassembly. We need to flow that information through to our maintenance team to say, hey, can we start to defer some maintenance on those items? We need to know uh, our flight planning team to say, hey, can we adjust some our flight routes to have less wear and tear on the motors? Um, we need to let our customer support team know, hey, we're going to have some schedule disruptions as a result of this, and they need to scale up their support. So a lot of these things that are highly coupled and really only possible when you connect your entire enterprise um, with a digital twin. And so we already started working with Palantir today. Our midnight aircraft is flying just down the road in Salinas, California, um, going through flight tests. We're learning, we're iterating as we work towards our 2025 FA certification. And so as we make, uh, as we make happy learnings and we make changes, um, we need our flight test team, our manufacturing team, our design release team, uh, you know, our purchasing team, all operating from the same sheet of music in terms of the bill of materials of the aircraft, what the latest design is, uh, what the latest results are from the test, and, and how we need to incorporate that in design. You know, any delays there, you know, if we have to wait a day between tests, right, if we have to wait a day for the supply chain team to know that the bill of materials has changed, that's going to impact our program timelines and delay our commercialization. So we've already got the Palantir team on site, and they've been able to, uh, to support our, um, uh, we've been able to build a, an ontology that takes the bill of materials of the aircraft, uh, lets us view it in a hierarchical way um, that we really haven't been able to visualize it in before. Uh, we're also able to then see where the risk is in our bill of materials, where we need to apply more pressure on the purchasing side, um, and really get this all to come together in, in a faster time scale than ever been seen uh, for an aircraft certification program of this, um, of this magnitude. And so, um, you know, but we really wouldn't be working with, with Palantir and AIP if it was just that problem. You know, we really, it's like, we, we've got a great point solution there, um, but really it's about enabling this, this, this uh, you know, massive urban transportation system at scale. So guys, how many of you knew that Archer Aviation was a customer of Palantir? To be fair, it did slip my mind for a minute, even though I did cover it back about seven months ago. Anyway, guys, make sure you tell me how many of you are Palantir shareholders. And you want to know about the earnings? make sure to check that out next and I'll meet you right there.